hey, I'm Ugly George, let's talk. If you know anything about New York, you know about loudmouths. Do you know how many loudmouths come up to me looking at this and say, hey, you know you're stupid. Why am I stupid? You got dynamite caps on your camera, they could blow up. <laughs> dynamite caps. We have a lot of idiots on the streets here. So I don't like to show them this because, you know, they know that these are dynamite caps. But what's with the uh, satellite dish? Turn around a little bit here. Now, clever people know that this is a parabolic dish which improves sound. And you actually can put a microphone in here and improve the sound a lot. But morons will always say, hey, satellite, am I being beamed up to the satellite live? Uh, what's right? in the box? Just stuff? Or condoms. Condoms? Yes. How many condoms? Uh, 144. you got to be ready at all times. So this is a good but not a great camera. But in my hands, it's deadly. So I'm able to do incredible stuff with this that other people don't. Because I'm Ugly George and I do what I do. Other people have fabulous fabulous three chip cameras and the best technology, the best this, the best that, a crew of 10 people and they still can't make it work. I could show you the most politically connected lawyer in New York who I just shot about an hour ago, just walking down the street because I recognized him, he knew who I was, and I just did this impromptu thing on the street with him. His name is Ron Kuby. You may know who he is. Okay, I just got him. And uh, other people were like, uh, Ron, could you please wait an hour and a half while my crew gets set up? Oh, we forgot this. Can we go back to the studio? Ron wasn't going to wait. He's a busy guy. Public access had come to cable TV in New York. No one paid much attention to it. Some people put on sex shows, but very bad sex shows. And when sex was bad, it was very bad. And in black and white, too. So I came on with a show, by the way, in black and white, where I not didn't just meet porn stars or pay porn stars or get girls to strip and say, hey, look, you're going to see me spread my legs. Isn't that exciting? I actually picked up girls that didn't want to be picked up. And they were beautiful. And the last thing on their mind was to go into a hallway with some clown and take their clothes off. As I like to say, a dimly lit hallway. But it worked. And everybody liked it because it was spontaneous and it wasn't planned and they weren't porn stars. And just by word of mouth, everybody started watching. So more and more cable boxes were sold. I like to tell people that I helped build the Time Warner Center. <coughs> and when finally I had reached a huge peak of half a million viewers and more, they threw me off for the final time. They said I was obscene and violated community standards. I couldn't afford a crew, and so I had to carry everything. And in those days, cameras were not this size. You had a big camera, you had a cable, you had the video recorder, you needed extra batteries, extra lights. Now, if I'm going down the street with this stuff hanging off me, I could never get a girl to do anything. So I had to invent the backpack, the video backpack. I had to put the camera on an arm so I didn't have to hold it. And I had to be essentially a one-man band. I had to do the work of four people. A sound man, a lighting man, a cameraman, uh, a video recorder man. Plus talk the girl into it when she didn't want to be talked into it. These were not porn stars. So <clears throat> I invented the backpack and then everybody said, hey, you look like a spaceman. I said, okay. I get some silver suit. And I made the silver suit in the backpack and it became like a trademark. Everyone dug the spontaneity that it wasn't like a porn movie where you knew what the girl was going to do. It was just a question of how many minutes it was going to take for her to get into it. The first person to tell me that in so many words was the famous author Norman Mailer. When I was invited to an event at the uh, Algonquin Roundtable, 